To be a journalist in Yemen these days means not knowing where you stand, what you can report. A lot has changed there in a relatively short time. Just four years ago, the country was still under the control of President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who spent more than three decades in power. That all came to an end in 2012. Then, last year, Houthi fighters took control of large parts of the capital, Sana'a. And last week, when President Abdul Rabu Mansur Hadi handed in his resignation, he effectively handed power over to the Houthis. Throughout the transitions, Yemeni journalists have been largely free to go about their work. But given the rise of the new political powers, they're never really sure of how far they can take their coverage, where the red lines are. Then there's the supposedly covert U.S. drone war against al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP. Washington calls the group one of the most dangerous offshoots of al-Qaeda, but that's a tough thing to verify. Very few journalists actually get close enough to report on the movement, let alone on the drone strikes against it, which have been known to claim the lives of innocents. And that lack of reporting has created a news and information vacuum that AQAP and its affiliates are only too happy to fill. The Listening Post's Nick Muirhead now on Yemen and the challenges that reporters face while trying to cover a complex and shifting political landscape. When Yemenis took to the streets of Sana'a last week, some were there to support, others to protest the Shia Houthis' takeover of the capital. Reports came in that journalists were being targeted, arrested, beaten, forbidden from covering the demonstrations, caught in the middle of a power struggle. It all started three years ago this month, with the ouster of President Ali Abdullah Saleh after 33 years in the presidential palace. Yemeni journalists moved into uncharted waters, the absence of clear power structure in the country has confused journalists. It has also severely undermined good investigative journalism on, let's say, the spectacular rise of the Shia Houthis here in the capital, Sana'a, or on Al-Qaeda expanding in the central part of the country, or on the secessionist movement, because journalists are afraid. They think they might get jailed, punished, sometimes even killed by powerful tribes bad or people affiliated with the government. However, at the same time, because uh, of this lack of control, they have an ability to talk about things that they perhaps wouldn't have been able to do before. And now when you go to a, a newspaper stand, for example, in Sana'a, you'll see different newspapers side by side criticising different political figures, government policy uh, and various other things. And, and there's a wide array of opinions there. You've had this proliferation of I don't know, yellow media outlets, for lack of a better word, affiliated with all sorts of political parties, basically publishing rubbish. The new media freedom has just been a double-edged sword. Before, I think people didn't necessarily think the government was telling the truth. Now, no one really has any idea who's telling the truth. On January 22nd, President Abdul Rabu Mansur Hadi quit over his government's confrontation with the Houthis. He was a key ally of the US in its covert drone war against Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP. However, just three days later, a US drone strike reportedly killed three men that officials claim belonged to Al-Qaeda. But for now, their word is all that we have to go on because journalists very rarely get to report from the scene of these attacks. According to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, since 2002 there have been between 72 and 84 confirmed drone strikes in Yemen, more than 100 unconfirmed cases. They're mostly taking place in the south, in provinces like Shabwa and Abyan, which are hundreds of kilometers from the capital. Which is why it is so important that journalists are allowed to report freely. But that isn't happening, and the primary reason is access. Of course, it's hard for international journalists for security reasons. It needs some deep understanding of the local complexities to get access to whatever information you need in Yemen. Some of those areas are either under the control of Al-Qaeda or disgruntled tribesmen, and we've seen many cases of international journalists kidnapped by those people or those political factions. I'm talking about uh, Houthi-controlled areas in Sada, I'm talking about Shabwa Abiyan, Hadramaut, which are now under the control of Al-Qaeda. I'm talking to, about areas under the control of secessionists in the south, or areas controlled by independent tribesmen like in Ma'arib and Ajaw. Now, local journalists 
face different kind of more complex issues, they perhaps can go to those areas. But then there's a question of, number one, are these journalists trustworthy, for example, when they're reporting on certain issues? People might not take their word for it. Secondly, um, they're much more at risk from local figures and they're much more at risk of, of, of being violently attacked or being silenced. Case in point, Abdul Ella Haida Shaya. In December 2009, the Yemeni journalist travelled to the site of a drone strike to verify the Yemeni government's claim that it had carried out the attack against Al-Qaeda. What he found were US missile parts that were not in the Yemeni arsenal and that among the casualties were women and children. Seven months later, he was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison for having links to Al-Qaeda. Shia remained in jail at the insistence of the Obama administration until 2013 when he was released and put under house arrest. Among the news outlets that he worked for are Al Jazeera, The New York Times, The Washington Post and ABC News. Without journalists like Abdul Ella Haider Shaya, the international media are reliant on the official version of events. So when uh, events happen around the country and uh, a number of people may have died, the government will put out a press release or they will have a spokesman go and say terrorists have been killed, when in reality it was civilians that were killed. And uh, unless any independent uh, people can go down and verify that, that's going to be the story and that's always what is picked up by the international media. Let me assure you, most of what written in international media about Yemen, whether security or non-security, it misinforms more than it informs. There has been cases where I see it uh, reported in international media, you know, militants were killed in this drone strike. And by the end of the day, I know these people are civilians. But no one knows, and militants has been one of the easy uh, uh, words you can just put there to define anyone. What the US and Yemeni governments want you to believe is that the victims of drone attacks are members of Al-Qaeda. But AQAP isn't taking that narrative lying down. It's pushing back with its own propaganda. Al-Qaeda is on an offensive to win the hearts and minds of the Yemenis. And they've been smartly using social media in a way or another to promote that narrative. They basically say to Yemenis, you have to unite with us to fight the Americans and to fight this government. When there's been a drone attack, often what Al-Qaeda will do will be to go to the uh, places where, where these drone attacks have happened uh, and, and start doing vox pops in the streets with, with locals uh, asking them how they feel about what's happened um, how angry they are and you know how the Yemeni government are simply stooges to the, to the West and that's a problem now that the, the, the West and the Yemeni government have to face when if they're not letting um, independent and say neutral figures go and cover these stories, other people are going to take advantage. It remains to be seen how effective Al-Qaeda's sort of I guess, propaganda campaign has been. But the fact is, even people who despise Al-Qaeda are still watching this stuff and it's being spread very widely outside of official channels, um, which means that AQAP has had much more success than other more mainstream groups in Yemen. And that in itself is a victory. Gone are the days where the authorities could bury the truth, keep journalists away from the story and wait for it to blow over. If traditional journalists can't report the real story, others will step in and tell it their way. And that is something the new powers that be in Yemen and others will have to deal with. More viewers on the download now on the state of journalism in the end. Specialized journalists on drone who challenge the U.S. admin's narrative about drones in Yemen, these journalists have faced imprisonment, assault, and even deportation from the country. It seems there is a joint determination by the U.S. admin and the Yemeni government to keep ambiguity about the truth of these targeted killings so they can control the general public opinion. In 1990, Yemeni thought that they reached the peak of democracy when newspapers were finally allowed to open after the end of totalitarian regimes in both the North and the South. But this was not the reality. Later on, even an armed militia, the way we have now, is still controlling the state TV and still chasing journalists and citizen journalists. This leaves us with one alternative, which is the internet. But the question remains, how many Yemenis have access to this tool?